morning ladies and gentlemen today we are asking the age-old question what came first the chicken or the egg I'm joking the age-old question do you get a sleeper or do you get a stock car and unit or do you get a fast car from the start which is cheaper which is better what suits whom best I am of course walking to work again no surprise here, I'm late as usual. I don't know why I do this to myself all the time. I can leave on time. You know, there, I have absolutely no reason to be late. I'm ready to go. If I start walking at a certain time, I'll be there on time. And I'm absolutely ready to walk at that time, but I don't. I don't know if it's la just laziness or if it's, or what it is, but uh, it's pretty stupid. Ooh, RX-8. I can really smell the problems from over here. Nice stuff. Very nice. I like rotaries. They go... If you install a turbo, that is. I don't think the RX-8 was turbocharged. Was it? Anyway, what I do know is it was notorious for being unreliable. But that's probably because people tuned it so much. Not sure, but I like those quirky cars and I like the, the shape of the RX-8, you know, with the little hunchback thing at the back. That wasn't a bath, poor guy. I am enjoying a five-star lunch. It is so good. I've been starving the whole morning. That is some good shit. But back to our original conversation. So what should you buy? A fast car from the factory or... A slow car that you can tune. Now I really like both, obviously, because uh, the slow car you've got that whoa, what the fuck factor, and the wild car you've got that like, you know, it's just you know what it is, but you're still not expecting it. As an example, I love what Yoon also did to his uh, Rolls Royce George. And yes, it's pronounced Yoon, not John. <coughs> so we got a slow AF Rolls Royce Wraith. Uh, with the big chunky V12 that didn't really have so much power standard um, and he tuned it well it had let's say like this it had a lot of power standard but we mustn't forget the Rolls-Royce Wraith is a big heavy car it's like a land boat and he tuned it it has 800 horsepower you see you're in your Lambo Gallardo you know cruising around here comes a fucking 800 horsepower Rolls pulls up next to you at the lights he, you know, revs or whatever, tries to race you, and you just laugh at yourself, you know, like, <laughs> this guy. And then, like, okay, you wanna go? You wanna go? And you accelerate, and he pulls away, and you, you just go. And there you're stuck with your two seater Lambo Gallardo um, that just lost a, ro uh, a race to a Rolls Royce Wraith. I would personally pull into the Lambo garage, be like, yo. Give me that Rolls Royce over there. Now, it's that. Just take it, take the Lambo, give me the keys to that, I want that. So I really love sleepers, but I also had a Megane GT220 Renault. Okay, it's not a fast car, it's a sports car. It's a low end range. It's like the entry level kind of sports car, low end range kind of stuff, right? 220 horsepower, 300 Newton meters. Same engine as a Renault Megane RS275, which has 275 horsepower. The difference is this one has a different ECU tune and less boost. But, same turbo, same engine, same everything. You can up the boost, up the tune. And then you have 275 horsepower. Or, capable up to 330 horsepower without modifying anything. So did I do it? No. Fuck no, sorry. Fuck no. You know how much repairs cost on a Renault Megane GT220? It's a lot and if you do that you void the warranty and that's a big problem for me because I didn't have money back then actually I still don't have money but you void the warranty you pay for everything yourself and the new Renault again RS's or GT's the the 2 liter turbocharged engine is a really good engine it's really tunable um, it's really rely it's reliable as shit. Everyone says so on the forums and all that kind of stuff. Very very few failures have been documented, <clears throat> and the failures are nothing major ever. It's like a um, a vacuum seal or a you know a bad fuel pump or something like that. 
um, but the engine itself very very stable block very stable uh, b b b b b thing very stable engine still I don't want to tune it because I'm gonna lose that warranty and I'm gonna know that um, you know if I want to go on a long drive or something like that I won't be able to or I will be able to but if something breaks it's on me and I'm not a fan of that if I had friends who were mechanics or if I had friends at all they could help me do the work you know be a bit lenient on the labor and that kind of stuff you know um, and I wouldn't have to pay so much for it but I don't and I don't have a place to do it myself and I don't have the money to do it myself either so it's very important that I had the the service you know service uh, warranty and all that kind of stuff having said that though if I had the option to tune the GT220 to 330 horsepower without voiding the warranty hell yeah I would do that but now you have this dilemma do you spend a little bit more on a car that is fast from the factory or do you spend a little bit less on a car that's slow from the factory but has very good tuning potential to be as fast as the car that you bought that you could have bought fast in the end you have to work out uh, how much everything is going to cost you know you have to factor in costs of repairs for the slow car and all other stuff but I mean having a slow car that you can tune is awesome like in South Africa there's a big community of VW Polos the 1.9 TDI uh, which has like 99 horsepower from the factory or whatever and they tune these cars to like 200 horsepower or like 180 to 200 horsepower and the engine itself the block itself is quite stable and you know the internals are quite good and can handle the boost um, it's just the transmission and all that kind of stuff that has to be upgraded turbo especially <laughs> things that those cars do like I was I had a 200 horsepower Mitsubishi truck sure it was a truck you know you had all-wheel drive and then it was heavy and that kind of stuff but it pulled you know it pulled okay for a 200 horsepower L200 Mitsubishi and one day I came I was at the traffic line there was this guy in his fucking diesel polo and he was like looking over at me and he was playing music loud and was being real cocky you know the kind of guy that you just want to race and I didn't know it was tuned it looked completely stuck and obviously the light went green and I pulled away and this is a clip of me pulling away oh. and he literally just left me in the dust he just like that like like lightning oiled lightning it's crazy. There's that Polestar again. And I recorded a different video. It's a V60 Polestar. Oh Not sure why I got so many dislikes. Why'd that video get so many dislikes? What do you guys have against Polestar? Are you Polestarists? Not sure what that means. I guess it means racist. Racist against Polestar? What have you got against Polestars? Are you Nordicists? Got something against Nordics? This guy picked these, this guy picked these mud flaps up from a BMW shop. Obviously. Because that has to come from BMW. My people, it has been a long day. I'm editing the vlog right now. And I hope you enjoy it. I hope you sit down at home on your laptops or your phones. or You're probably taking a dump right now, which is fine too. Um, and you watch and you enjoy me being me and showing you what I do. And if you did like it, give it a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe. And I'll make more just for you. Just for you watching this right now. Just for you I'm going to make more, okay? Not for anybody else. Just for you watching this right now, okay? If you subscribe. If you don't subscribe, I'll probably make more anyway. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.